Now the R7 10 is back together, we can start putting the Dell H200 RAID card in it and its appropriate cables. Didn't bother showing any of the reassembly because it's exactly the same as disassembly, just in reverse and a bit cleaner. Replace the thermal compound under the two coolers and the chipset heatsink as well. So this arrived in the post this morning. This is the Dell H200 and it's the correct edition for this server because it has this uh, plastic bracket on the bottom with the little release peg. You can get these that came with a PCI bracket on the end here and I believe those are more for the workstation type servers uh, but they will fit in the R710 uh, you just need to take the bracket off. Along with that, from the same store that bought the card from, came two of these SAS cables. Um, I've forgotten the correct designation for the connectors on the end, but these are these will fit this backplane and this controller. I think these were actually for for the R700 SAS controller um, because they have the straight plugs on this end. But because it's only a, um, a short height, there they should fit and they are quite long so we've got plenty of cable length to play with so let's go ahead and get this all installed I don't think these are the right brackets for it, as uh, they, I think these were for the Perk H6, but you know, it fits in there and it's, it's snug, it's not going to come out. So now we just need to run the cables in, and that's as easy as it was to take them out. So the only thing we need to notice is that the SAS connections are labelled A and B, so we need to make sure we get those the right way around. So the furthest one away, uh, it's just off the shot here, is SAS A, and we'll get that one plugged in first. And that goes down to SAS A on the controller. So as you can see, these uh, H700 cables are long enough. Actually, they're a bit too long, but uh, that doesn't matter. So as you can see, they are a bit longer, but it's better to have a bit too much than uh, a bit too little. Um, I'm just going to make sure that they're going to fold down nicely and uh, I might see if I can sort of loop it under this blue bracket here just so it doesn't interfere with any airflow and create uh, any more noise than it already does. So I think that's as, as good as I'm going to get it. Uh, sort of the airflow corridor here is nice and free now. The uh, the cables are off to the side and they're laying there naturally. So we should get some nice airflow without wind noise catching on these cables. The last thing to do now before we actually go and flash the IT mode and relative firmware onto the H200 card is to just boot up the system and make sure it's all recognised. I've got a crucial MX500 250GB SSD which I'm going to use as a boot drive for TrueNAS 
So until I get um, an adapter made up so I can get power to this from the sort of non-standard set of connectors that this motherboard has and get this plugged into the SATA connection that this does have. I'm just going to see if I can plug this into the SAS backplane and if it will recognise. Now I have heard that you need the Gen 2 backplane for it to recognise SSDs but I'm going to see if it will do it anyway um, because I'd like to try and get TrueNAS running um, on it first and then I can worry about getting this properly installed. So it's not ideal to just have it floating in there, but it's a very light SSD, so the connector is actually just holding it for now. But as I say, it's not going to stay there, so I'm not going to worry too much about it just flapping around. As you can see, on my laptop we've got the iDRAC interface working as well, uh, and that works quite well. Uh, I'm having some trouble getting the, uh, the Java console to load up, but I think that's because the... Uh, the firmware of the iDRAC is still 1.96 uh, which was from around 2013 um, so it's still quite old I'm hoping that just updating that firmware will allow me to access the virtual console uh, or if it's something to do with the settings I don't know I haven't figured it out yet um, but I've got my keyboard down and I've got the monitor up there so I'm just going to load it up into the BIOS and see if we can see everything we should see. And there we go, it seems to actually be working. Uh, as you can see right here, we've got Perk 200i. I think the I on the end means integrated, as you can get an H200e, which has external SAS ports on it. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Is there any options we've got on here? I think that's just looking around. So I'm going to take a picture of that SAS address because that's something I'm going to need when flashing the new firmware onto this card. I could probably just do a screen grab off the footage but that was easier. Great, so it looks like we've got RAID support if I did want to do that. And nice, so it's showing all five drives. So I've got the two 300 gigabyte drives at the top. I've got my two two terabyte drives there, and I've also got my 250 gigabyte SATA drive there, which, yeah, it's showing as a SATA SSD, which is great. Um, I think for you to be able to run uh, both SATA and SAS drives on this, you do need at least two SAS drives in the system on ports or sorry bays zero and one. Uh, so that's what I've got. So. I think for now I'm probably going to leave that SSD in there and support it with a bit of block of wood or something uh, and install TrueNAS onto that and then I can worry about creating the proper connection to it internally somehow or some other way uh, and then I can create my storage pools onto these two sets of hard drives so I'll probably have my primary pool on uh, the two two terabyte drives running in a raid, mirror raid and then I'll probably put the other 300 gigabyte hard drives in another mirror array uh, to maybe do some virtualization or something and just have a dedicated uh, uh, array, RAID array for that. But other than that, I'm happy. Let's see what else we got. So not too much that I either need to worry about or I'm familiar with. So let's see if we can go into the, just the system BIOS. And while that's rebooting, see I've got a uh, an error message on the front screen saying the temperature is outside of its preferred range, and I think uh, on the iDRAC it's saying it's nine degrees, but it's when yeah it's when it's near its warning threshold of about eight, I think. 
So it doesn't like it being in the garage here. So it looks like on this summary screen as well, we can see that all the hard drives have showed up, including that uh, SATA SSD. Um, so that's good. So now we're going to try and flash the LSI uh, firmware onto the H200 card so we can use uh, the full pass through for the hard drives. <laughs> 